Welcome to Monochemistry. Today's lesson is all about relationships and balanced chemical equations. We've spent a lot of time over the course of the last couple of years. You, in particular, have spent a lot of time working on balancing chemical equations. Why have we balanced so many chemical equations? Because it's fun? Um, maybe. But actually, uh, you can't balance chemical equations, then you can't move on to the really more important aspect of chemistry, which is stoichiometry. And stoichiometry is completely based on the relationships that are built within a balanced chemical equation. Now, in this course, we spent a, a good deal of time working on conversions. And this particular graphic here talks a little bit about, or should refresh your memory a little bit about some of the conversions we've looked at. Here in the, in the center, you have the mole. Mole can be converted to mass using the molar mass. Mass can be converted to moles. Moles can, can be converted, converted to particles of either atoms, molecules, or formula units. Formula units are just like molecules for ionic compounds. And then molecules can then be converted into atoms. We've done all that. This one here we haven't talked about yet, but we will a little bit later on. But the mole is really useful. It allows us to convert back and forth. It's very rare, however, in real life that you'll talk about the number of particles or atoms that are reacting in a chemical reaction. You're more likely to talk about mass. And so that's where the, the crux of our issue is here. How do we use this, these relationships and balanced chemical equations to make predictions about real life chemi chemical equations? All right, so what, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a, a reaction, a really important reaction, actually, and we're going to really learn about what some of the relationships are. And then hopefully that will be a springboard into how we can use stoichiometry in everyday chemistry. So here we have a chemical reaction, as you can see. You have nitrogen gas reacting with hydrogen gas to form a product called ammonia. Ammonia is NH3, and it is a chemical that you need to know. So if, if you write nothing else down for this video, make sure you write down the chemical formula NH3 and write ammonia next to it, because that's what it is, and I'm going to be using that a lot. You're going to have to know that one. It's one of the only ones. It's kind of like water and, and carbon dioxide. You know the chemical formulas for those. This one's ammonia. All right. So like I said, this reaction is very important. Probably the most important chemical reaction in our lives, believe it or not, even though you've probably never heard of it. This reaction produces ammonia gas. Now, ammonia gas by itself is not particularly useful. In fact, it's poisonous to us. But ammonia gas can be converted into the main components of fertilizers. And fertilizers are probably the most significant chemicals in terms of our population and our ability to make food. Think about it. Currently, there are approximately 7 billion people on the planet. They all have to eat. How do they eat? Well, we grow food, we raise animals, we grow crops. You need fertilizer to grow crops efficiently. You can try it without fertilizer, but it doesn't work so well. So this gas, very important. We convert it into fertilizer, we grow food. Our population can survive. So it's a pretty significant thing. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Mr. Monahan went off on a tangent. What we're here to talk about is what are the relationships built within this balanced chemical equation. And I think you'll agree that it's balanced. Two nitrogens, two nitrogens. Six hydrogens, two times three is six hydrogens balanced. Perfect. Here's what it tells us. Number one. It tells us that for every one molecule of nitrogen, you can write this down, for every one molecule of nitrogen, three molecules of hydrogen have to react. So one nitrogen reacts with 
three hydrogens oops, to give me two molecules of ammonia. One molecule of nitrogen reacts with three molecules of hydrogen to give me two molecules of ammonia. That is the relationship that this shows us. But it can also show us something more significant. Because how often am I going to go into a lab and say, oh, look, I've got one molecule of nitrogen and three molecules of hydrogen. Let's make some ammonia. Probably not very often. But what I probably could do is I could use the mole relationship. So for every one mole of nitrogen, that's supposed to be a nitrogen, I need three moles of hydrogen, and I produce two moles of NH3. Makes sense, right? Okay, really quickly, it tells us how many molecules we need. It tells us how many moles we would need to react with each other to form a certain amount of product. What does it tell us about the mass? Well, you guys know this. If I know how many moles of each of these substances I have, can I not convert it into mass? Here's what I want you to try. I want you to find the molar mass of nitrogen, and I want you to find the molar mass of hydrogen and multiply it by three. I want you to add those two things together. And I want you to show me that those two things added together are equal to the molar two times the molar mass of ammonia. Go ahead and try that. Bring your answer to class. What that is, ladies and gentlemen, the fact that the mass of the reactants equals the mass of the products is called the conservation of mass, a very important concept in chemistry. You guys go ahead and try that. Get the molar mass of this, three times the molar mass of this, and two times the molar mass of that. See if they're not equal. Now, why is that important? It means if we have a balanced chemical equation, not only can we predict the number of moles of products or reactants, but we can also make significant predictions about the masses of products and reactants. And that, ladies and gentlemen, when we get into a lab, is what it's all about. I'm never going to go into a lab and be like, oh yeah, can you get me uh, two moles of nitrogen, please? No, I'm going to be, can you get me 20 grams of nitrogen, please? If you can convert moles to grams, and you know this relationship, you can make all kinds of predictions about how much product you're going to get, how much reactant you need to react with. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. That, in a nutshell, are the relationships in a chemical reaction. Bring your questions to class.